Hi, it's Dr. Parikh. Now we're talking about how to integrate literature in your literature review. This is one of the toughest things for students to do for this class. Um, and it's really a very different way of thinking about how to write a paper. I've talked about it a lot already. Um, the, uh, the assignments like the article sort and the concept map, the outline parameters, those things sort of force you to do some integration. So what I'm going to do next, ooh, sorry, uh, my last video just finished saving. I'm going to show, I'm going to actually look at some example papers. Um, so sample literature reviews and talk about what students are doing uh, to integrate literature. Um, I'm actually, yeah, that'll be a little bigger. Let me just zoom a little bit. So we have the literature review and we see, uh, so here's one article, here's another article, and you can see these are basically the same people. Um, it can make it a little easier to mix and match if you choose at least some articles that are by similar groups of article of authors. It's probably a little late in the game for you to change that, although if you're really struggling, it might be worth looking up one or two other articles to help. Just make sure you submit those through one of the article notes. It's not going to change your grade, but it just sort of flags it for me to look at it and see if it's going to be appropriate. Um, it breaks my heart when I, a student manages to slip to the end of a paper uh, having switched out some of their articles. So earlier I said, I looked at their articles and said, yep, these are all okay. And now it turns out they're not. They have something in there that's a book review or a dissertation or is really more of a newsletter and isn't a peer reviewed empirical journal article. Um, so you see here's a paragraph with two authors and you can see um, she, the author here, the, the student author is kind of integrating so we'll give some information from one article and then we'll give information from another article and cites every time she switches articles um, and then she adds on kind of her own statement that is interpreting uh, or combining information from both articles um, down here so this student is um, citing the topic sentences to you don't have to, but I'm not going to get too fussy if you do. Um, and you can see she's now introducing a lot of articles. And so she's saying, you know, instead of saying, and I, I don't know just from looking at here, it could be that each of these articles addresses depression, stress, anxiety, and fear. But it could be that some of them address depression, others do stress and anxiety, and one of them looks at fear. And so she's just saying as a whole, these are some things that articles have, that studies have found are higher in mothers who have experienced multiple miscarriages. Um, so it's a way of combining information. And so when you see multiple citations at the end of a sentence, it has this feeling that you're really combining ideas from a lot of different articles. Uh, and now she's introducing a different article. So another one that talks about um, kind of what's happening. And then another study by the same author. So again, it's really easy to string these things together when you have similar authors. Um, this might actually, or I'm sorry, another study. So this is a different author actually. Um, so this author just looked at depression and anxiety. So again, like I said, up here, she's really combining information from what different studies have found. Um, and I'm guessing she meant to cite this Bergner up here also and just forgot. Um, and so she's kind of explaining how each study contributes. This is a bit of a long paragraph. It's also a one paragraph theme. Um, this is from another class where the, the paper is from another class where I didn't have quite as many rules um, to structure it. But now that I have the whole class to just focus on the paper, I'm getting more detailed to really help you dig in and understand what I'm looking for. Um, so this was fine in this paper, probably not going to fly so well in yours. Um, so 
actually, if this paper were for my class, for the class you're in right now, I might recommend breaking the paragraph up into two paragraphs, focusing on different emotions and making sure that you have at least two citations in each one, um, which would probably not be too, too terribly hard. Uh, then it goes into unhealthy habits. Now here we see, um, this is not a great topic sentence. You want a topic sentence that explains the entire paragraph like the last one had. Um, this one says in the study, I have no idea what study. Um, and then she goes on to talk about this person. So this would need a different topic sentence. Um, so here, this paragraph is really just focused on one study. Again, that was fine in the class where she wrote this. Um, in this class, that would not go so well because the rules have changed a little bit, uh, which is why with sample papers, it's a sample, it's an idea but you have to focus more on what I tell you is required. It's just to give you a sense of what has done well in the past. Uh, let's look at this one. Um, a big part of integration is also showing that you can go beyond the paper. So you're not just reporting, you're also commenting and looking at how ideas are similar or different, how maybe some things are showing special cases. So like, for most age groups, this is true, but with this age group, something else seems to be going on. Um, let's see, let me let that load a little bit. Um, so we have, again, we have a paragraph where it's mostly just coming from one author that was okay in that class, not happening so much. Another one, so you can see this is a lot of why I added in the requirements of having different citations because even well-written papers tended to fall into this one citation at a time trap. Um, and so it's kind of just looking at a way to order, you know, order each article. Um, down here, so in this class, there was a requirement that at least one paragraph cited different authors. Um, so down here we see it's kind of looped back around to two others. The prescribing physician also needs to take into account home life, school life, financial status. Um, and so talks about financial status and then talks about um, desire for treatment too. And so it's here, um, it's, you're still just kind of ordering information from different articles but you're at least doing it in a way of saying like, okay, what are, what do these have in common? Well, they're, they're all things that physicians need to consider when writing prescriptions. Um, so even though you're not saying, what does it mean together that the patient may not believe they need treatment and it's really expensive, um, that's true integration when you're thinking about what do these two things mean when taken together. Um, but here, it's a paragraph that has pulled ideas from different articles that focuses on one common goal, which is what does the prescribing physician need to take into account? Uh, you can look at the other two articles. Um, they may or may, you know, integration is one of the pieces that I'm really trying to push and figure out how to do well with students. Um, hopefully from this semester, I can grab a couple sample papers that I can make available to make it easier in the future. But I'm really hoping that the new activities I've put in and the, um, the levels of feedback you get really early on about integration will help in the future. Um, so if it's hard, know that you're probably doing it right. It's just a hard thing to do, but I have confidence that you will make progress, that you can revise and get better over time. That's a key is, you know, not, you, you can't waste all your energy right at the beginning. You have to know that this is a process of growing and getting feedback and making things better. Um, but I believe you're going to get there. I believe you're going to write a great paper at the end. Bye.